self development with tactics podcast today we are um we are gonna go through uh, chat gpt indeed i have pre um generated indeed pre-generated some some answers for some questions that i think um may be rather interesting and uh, also on uh, tim ferris on one hand on the other hand philosophy in general and then on the third hand um stoicism so i'm really excited to 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 go through them i haven't read the answers i was just you know typing a few questions um trying to you know overlook things you know to, to make sure that there's something uh, of value and interest in it or that it is interesting to me and yeah i think let's 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 go through it i guess um there we go there is it summary such is it this i think it indeed is yeah so what are tim ferris tips on happiness please excuse the typos i'm definitely not making sure that i'm writing everything as um correctly as i could and or maybe as i should in his book, The 4-Hour Work Week and Other Works, Tim Ferriss shares several tips and strategies for achieving happiness. And here are some of the key takeaways. The first one, focus on experiencing, focus on experiences over possessions. Ferriss suggests that happiness is more closely linked to experience than possessions. By prioritizing experiences such as travel, time with loved ones and learning new skills, we can increase our overall happiness and well-being. The second one, practice gratitude. Ferris recommends taking time each day to focus on things you are grateful for. This can help shift your focus away from negative thoughts and increase feelings of happiness and contentment. The third, cultivate positive relationships. Strong relationships with family and friends can be a major source of happiness. Ferris suggests prioritizing time with loved ones and investing in these relationships to increase happiness. Pursue your passions. Pursuing activities and hobbies that you have pass that, that you are passionate about can bring a sense of fulfillment and happiness. Ferris encourages readers to identify their passions and make time for them in their lives. Yes. And uh, I think it just, you know, has to be a priority. Um, happiness has to be a priority. I think very often one... Uh, I mean... I mean, prioritizing happiness is definitely uh, um, is definitely something one needs to work up to, I guess. Of course, when <laughs> you are in need of some money, you're probably going to take any job you can get your hands on or you can get. And, um, you know, therefore, you may not even be able to prioritize your happiness by, you know, maybe choosing a job that you would really like to do, but, you know, you're going to make less money, for example. Or maybe just not have several jobs and just one, but you can't do that because you need the money. So I think happiness to some degree, unfortunately, may be, uh, um, may be indeed something that, uh, you know, only privileged people kind of can do or can, you know, maybe go for, um, you know, regarding certain... Uh, circumstances certain things i was just you know going through some things that you know might not you know <laughs> might not help me with my happiness and uh you know definitely stress but um i mean on the other hand of stress there often is either money or um you know maybe a better grade or just a bit more a bit more fulfillment in the sense of okay i have done great that's doing this, that, and the other task. So, so yeah. Um, practice mindfulness. Was this the one? Yeah. Mindfulness practices such as meditation and breathing exercises can help reduce stress and increase feelings of happiness and well-being. Ferris recommends incorporating these practices into daily routines. The sixth one, give back. Helping others can bring a sense of purpose and happiness. Ferry suggests finding ways to give back to the community and making a positive impact on others. 
which I think is also a very good idea and um, is included, I guess, in many religious practices as well. So, um, you know, maybe you're just, you know, going through what, whatever religion that you're into or whatever, um, maybe even community that you're in um, to, you know, see whether this is the case. And I have seen throughout the years that, you know, sometimes, sometimes it really makes sense that um, especially religions, I think, are are doing certain things, you know, there probably was a thought behind that, even though, you know, it, it may be, uh, well, it may be taught and or shown in, uh, in a way that might not make clear what the intent there is. So I don't know, um, you know, giving to people, giving to the poor, giving to those people that are in need um, is nothing new. But uh, I do not remember reading anything in the Bible uh, or just, you know, in, 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 in a religion class that, that I have had in school and uh, about like, okay, this is the reason why uh, giving to people makes sense and whatever. So, yeah, I think you know what I'm referring to, what I'm talking about. Overall, Ferris emphasizes the importance of finding balance and prioritizing the things that truly bring us happiness and fulfillment. By focusing on experiences, cultivating positive relationships and practicing gratitude and mindfulness, we can increase our overall happiness and well-being. Sometimes this might also mean uh, this balance it might also mean being able to speak up, being able to 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 see through things you know being able to to realize certain things you know maybe sometimes even realizing the power that one is having the um you know the power over one own one's own life that that one is having but yeah but yeah but yeah but yeah um what are other philosophies saying about achieving happiness there are many different philosophies, schools of thought that address the topic of achieving happiness. So here are a few examples. I do think, um, since there are just so, so, so many philosophies, um, Jet GPT might just take what we have been dis discussing before. So Tim Ferriss, the four hour work week and so on and so forth to um, also build this or generate this answer. So the first one is Stoicism, the second one is Buddhism, then we have positive psychology and then existentialism. Um, I, I kind of have a feeling that they, they really also, um, you know, might be in the same space of, um, you know, topics or, or thoughts just. But yeah, Stoicism. The ancient Greek philosophy emphasizes the importance of living in accordance with nature and accepting the things we cannot control. According to Stoic philosophy, true happiness comes from within and can be achieved through self-discipline, virtue, and a focus on the present moment. Buddhism teaches that happiness can be achieved by cultivating mindfulness, com compassion, and wisdom, by letting go of attachment to material possessions and focusing on the present moment. Individuals can reduce suffering and achieve a state of inner peace and happiness. Positive psychology is a relatively new field that focuses on the study of human flourishing and happiness and emphasizes the importance of developing positive emotions, relationships and personal strengths to achieve greater happiness and well-being. The blue zones that are uh, known for um, you know those people that are living there, they are living a very long life. And I would assume and say that people that are living a long life um, extraordinarily long life um, that they are also a living a happy life I think so I believe in it um, yeah because I mean I don't know I mean if you're so unhappy if I, I would say that you're gonna die earlier so um, and, and of course, I mean, some people might also not be really happy, but they're having good genes and, and whatever. But I don't know. 
like I think also like the environment and the way they're living their life and uh, um, you know I, I think it, it really also is is tying into happiness and their happiness. Existentialism. The philosophical movement emphasizes the importance of creating meaning and purpose in one's life. According to existentialist philosophy, individuals can achieve happiness by taking responsibility for their own lives, making choices that align with their values, and finding meaning in their experiences. But I mean, uh, just find some meaning in your experiences. I think what I've been... What I've been... Uh, having in mind lately was this this notion of mindfulness and and living more carefully in a sense uh and carefully in the sense of um paying close attention to quite everything you know having it's i'm i'm, I'm lacking one word um living a more conscious life i guess because I might have noticed, I'm not quite sure yet, I might have noticed that whenever I'm just, you know, really unconsciously, <laughs> unconsciously, um, mindlessly, um, you know, doing things, I'm just working on whatever that I have to work on and, and so on and so forth, I do have a feeling that I'm not as happy as, you know, and also definitely more stressed compared to me sitting there and exactly knowing what I'm doing, you know, not necessarily planning every single movement and then noticing every single movement, but realizing, okay, now I'm sitting here, I'm doing this. Okay, I'm, I'm doing this step and whatever. I do sometimes, I, I, well, I do lately feel that, you know, this, this might be one way to, to deal with feeling overwhelmed which was actually also um like this question what is stoicism and buddhism saying about feeling overwhelmed because lately i've had a really hard time with feeling overwhelmed i had really a lot to do and uh you know sometimes then i think well is it about me am i not able to deal with whatever that i'm having to deal with but yeah both Stoicism and Buddhism offer insights and techniques for dealing with feelings and overwhelm, of overwhelm. In Stoicism, one of the central tenets is the idea of focusing on what is within our control and accepting what is outside of our control. When faced with overwhelming, overwhelming situations, Stoic philosophy encourages individuals to take a step back and focus on the things they can control, such as their own thoughts and reactions. By accepting that some things are outside of our control, we can reduce feelings of stress and anxiety and focus our energy on the things that we can influence. In Buddhism, mindfulness practices such as meditation and breathing exercises are often used to help individuals cope with overwhelming feelings. By focusing on the present movement and developing a non-judgmental awareness of one's thoughts and emotions, individuals can reduce feelings of stress and anxiety and increase feelings of calm and inner peace. Additionally, Buddhism emphasizes the importance of letting go of attachments to material possessions and external circumstances, which can also help reduce overwhelm by focusing on what is truly important in life. Overall, both Stoicism and Buddhism offer insights into how to deal with overwhelming feelings by focusing on what is within our control and developing mindfulness practices to increase feelings of calm and inner peace. And with that being said, I'm going to end this episode here, so I'll hopefully see you soon.